So I've been working on this game with another person on my Discord and one of the problems we ran into is when you have a lot of zombies on the map, every time that the server updates, the zombie has to figure out where it needs to walk. And when it's trying to update its position, you need to make sure that if it tries to collide with, for example, one of these bushes, that it doesn't collide with it. And when you have a bunch of different things on a map, there's really no way to achieve this unless you add something called a spatial grid that divides up your map and kind of buckets all of the zombies into particular partitions of your map so that when you need to find all of the entities near a zombie, it'll just look up within the region instead of having to loop over thousands of entities. So I'm gonna talk about spatial grids and maybe this isn't really interesting to you if you're not doing game dev, but I still think it's a pretty cool concept to learn. Uh, if you're a software engineer or a web developer. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this right here and just put it inside a diagramming software. And I want to kind of talk about the naive way first. So the naive way is you are going to basically get a zombie. So get a zombie, move it towards a player. If it collides with a collidable, move it back. Okay. This is a really rudimentary way to do physics in like a 2D game where every zombie basically needs to move somewhere and move back or like revert its changes if it were to collide with something that's in its way. But if you have a ton of objects, if I were to zoom out, notice I have like quite a lot of bushes here. I have a lot of bushes and a lot of other zombies they could potentially collide with. If you have a bunch of players, you don't have to have a zombie loop over with like a for loop every single collidable entity because that's basically O of N squared, right? So we're gonna talk about O of N squared a little bit and that's how you can denote it. So the naive way again is just like for every zombie, loop over every collidable entity and then do your physics updates or whatever. And this can be very good for a small game but when you have a lot of things, it's just not gonna work out. So a different approach is we're gonna do something called a spatial grid. So if I were to go ahead and draw a line here and um, let me zoom out a little bit. And if I draw a line over here, this is your X axis. So it's gonna start at zero. And then this is your Y axis. Oh, sorry, also starts at zero. Okay, so for the spatial grid, what you do is you basically say, you know what? I could actually chunk this thing up into different sec sections or cells, okay? Let's just draw some lines to kind of denote that we're chunking up the entire map into cells. And one thing you'll notice is that when you see, for example, a zombie, let's like look at this zombie right here. This zombie belongs to this cell. I mean, we could give this cell a name, um, but we're just gonna go ahead and change the color of this real quick. Okay, so that zombie belongs to this cell. And if you wanted to do a faster lookup, how would you do it? Well, what you do is when all of the map objects initialize, you loop through all of them, and then you figure out what cell it lives on. So for example, this cell would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 0, 1. Now if we're doing, I think we should invert it like this. So it'd be like 1, 3. So this is in cell row 1, column 3. So, so hopefully that makes sense. And then like the cell to the left would be 1, 2, and this would be 1, 5, or sorry, 1, 4. Now how do we actually bucket these things? Okay. Every zombie has a location. For example, this one might be like, I don't know, three, two, five, and then a Y location of one, two, five. Let's pretend that that is denoting the location of this zombie right here. So an X of three, two, five, and a Y of one, two, five. How do you determine or look up to know what cell it belongs to? Well, some simple math, we can just do three, two, five, divided by some type of grid size. So for example, I think in our game, we do a 64 by 64. So your grid is 64 by 64, which means that you just simply do 325 minus 64, and that's gonna give you what? If I was good at math, I could tell you off the top of my head, but I'm not. So five, that's gonna give us a five dot something, but you can basically just floor it, and you'll get the location of that cell in the, uh, the X direction or the Y direction. Same thing with the Y. So you'll do like a 125 divided by your grid size, equals, uh, this would probably be like three, 125, 1.9. Okay, so that's 1.9 actually, not three, uh, 1.9. So again, you round down. So you're gonna go with one. 
So with that math, you basically, every game update, you can loop through all of your entities. And let's say you have a zombie, like 100 zombies, right? So that's not that many entities you have to loop over every single game tick. The looping over every entity to figure out what cell they live on is basically O of N. Okay, you run it once at the beginning of your game loop or at the end, and then you're basically going to figure out the new cells that all these things live in. Now, the cool part is now when you want to do collision detection, instead of looking over every single other entity that I could collide with, what we're going to do is say, hey, you know what? Let's just grab all of the entities that are inside of the current cell that we're looking at. And then also we need the entities that are to the left and to the right. I don't know how to den den denote this, but like you would, it would make sense that you want to grab this one, right? The zombie is this one right here. You want to grab the cell that it currently lives in, which you can do by this doing the simple math. But then you also want to add one and grab this one grab this one, grab this one, and grab all the other neighboring cells because we can assume that these small little entities, these zombies, could potentially live on a borderline here, right? They could be living like halfway through these. And so you wanna zoom out once and just grab all the entities that are neighboring this. And so now you're only looping over, let's say, 10 other things that you need to check or 20 other things you need to check if it's collidable versus instead you'd have to check I don't know, thousands of things, right? And if you look at this game right now, it's a little bit laggy because I mean, I just let this thing run for like seven minutes as I'm talking, but that's the idea. You're gonna hit a limit at some point, especially in JavaScript, because it's not the fastest for like doing this stuff, but using a spatial grid, again, this is a spatial grid, what we're talking about here. You can reduce your like collision detection times from n squared to, or sorry, n to the power of two, um, just basically to O of n. And then looking up is like constant, right? You just simply do some math. You can look up all the entities in the cells, the neighboring cells, and that's like a super fast lookup. I think it's also called spatial partitioning, which uh, if you wanna Google that, you could do a spatial grid or spatial partitioning. And again, it's just the same thing I kind of talked about. So like if you do like 2D games, you'll hopefully see like a diagram that, um... ah, here we go, this, this one might be kind of good. This is actually a really good article. I think I read through this some where he kind of explains with a much more elegance than I just did of what exactly spatial partitioning is, why you want to do it, and how it can really help reduce the computation time of your game engines. There's also something called a quad tree, which might be something kind of in the same uh, idea, the, the, the same like teachings, um, a quad tree. But for right now, the spatial partitioning is kind of just a simple way to do it. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something from watching this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Like always, leave a comment. Have a good day. Happy coding.